Charleston, South Carolina, formerly known as Charlestown. It was the premier seaport in the 1700s and the fifth largest city in North America just 10 years after its founding. But the 1700s were wrought with thieves on the open seas. It is known as the Golden Age of Piracy, and legendary figures such as Black Bart Roberts and Calico Jack regularly claimed ships and riches that were headed to the New World. One figure rises above the rest of the legends and enters the realm of mythical. Blackbeard and his ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. Tonight, we look into the event that occurred 305 years ago to the day. Blackbeard and his siege on Charleston, South Carolina. Little is known about the man Edward Teach, such as his birthday, birthplace, younger life, or even his actual name. He is also known as Edward Thatch or Thack. Researchers believe he could have been a sailor on privateer ships during Queen Anne's War. At some point, he settled on the Bahamian island of New Providence home to pirate captain Benjamin Hornigold. Teach joined his crew sometime around 1716. Hornigold placed Edward in command of a ship that he had captured, and the two ran rampant together on the open seas. On November 28, 1717, Teach captured a French slave ship known as La Concorde. After abandoning the crew and slaves on an island, he took the ship and renamed it Queen Anne's Revenge. He equipped her with 40 guns and crewed her with over 300 men. Teach's infamy grew. He became known as Blackbeard, derived from his thick black beard and fearsome appearance. To add to his intimidation tactics, he tied slow-burning fuses under his hat, giving him the appearance of a devil. Though it is reported that Blackbeard was not quite as violent as his reputation would have one believe. Blackbeard and Hornigold separated over the winter of 1717, but reunited by chance in March 1718 near Central America. Blackbeard now sailed north to the Carolinas with a four-ship flotilla mounting at least 60 guns, the most powerful maritime force on this side of the globe. Arriving off Charleston, South Carolina on May 22nd, he blockaded the port for an entire week. All ships coming and going from the port were stopped. Over the next five to six days, approximately nine ships were stopped and stripped of their valuables. Even ships that attempted to sail past Charlestown were ransacked. One ship headed for London included a group of prominent Charlestown citizens, which included Samuel Ragg, a member of the Council of the Province of Carolina. The passengers were questioned about the ships still in port and then locked below the decks. Blackbeard informed the prisoners that his fleet required medical supplies from the colonial government of South Carolina. If they didn't hand over the requested medicine, 
he would behead all of the prisoners, send their severed heads to the governor, and burn all of the captured ships. Rag agreed to these demands. A Mr. Marks and two members of Blackbeard's crew were given two days to collect the drugs. Blackbeard moved his fleet and the captured ships to within a few miles of the shore. Three days later, a messenger sent by Marks returned to Blackbeard. Marks' boat had sunk and delayed their arrival in Charlestown. Blackbeard granted an extension of two days, but still they did not return. He then called a meeting of his fellow pirates and moved eight ships into the harbor, causing panic within the town. When Marks finally returned to the fleet, he explained what had happened. On his arrival, the demands were presented to the governor and the drugs had been quickly gathered, but the two pirates sent to escort Mr. Marks had disappeared. They had been busy drinking and were eventually discovered drunk. Blackbeard kept to his side of the deal and released the captured ships and his prisoners. I'll bet relieved of their valuables, including the fine clothing some of them had worn. On the 22nd of November, 1718, Royal Navy Lieutenant Robert Maynard would catch Blackbeard at Ocracoke, North Carolina. The two had a fierce battle at sea, but with some quick thinking by Maynard and his crew, they were able to surprise the infamous Blackbeard. When Blackbeard boarded Maynard's ship, his men rushed out from below deck and surprised the pirates. Maynard killed Blackbeard and many of his crew. His body was shot no fewer than five times and cut some twenty. Lieutenant Maynard had Blackbeard's head severed from his body and hung from the bowsprit of his ship. The body was thrown overboard, and legend says it swam around Maynard's ship five times before eventually sinking. Many of the Thatch family of North Carolina believe they are related to Edward Teach, and one of his descendants, Admiral John Johnny Thatch of the United States Navy, pioneered the famous Thatch Weave that kept many U.S. fighter pilots alive at war in the Pacific during World War II. Blackbeard met his violent end on the shores of North Carolina. Yet residents in both Charleston and Ocracoke report seeing a headless apparition walking the beaches in May and November. There are a few that believe that the Gray Man, a specter that walks the shores of the East Coast, is actually Blackbeard, paying for the sins he committed in life by warning the citizens of dangers coming from the sea in his death. Whatever you believe, it is clear that Blackbeard has left his mark, not only on the shores of South Carolina, but forever in history. Thank you everyone for tuning into the season one finale of Grim History. We hope you all enjoyed this brief look into the most infamous pirate to ever live. Stay tuned for season two.